That's a familiar error to anyone used to working with floppy disks. And it's one that usually puts the brakes on whatever you're trying to accomplish. I'm going to show you a few ways to deal with error prone disks that you can hopefully use to recover some of your data. A word of caution before we get started. Most data recovery methods mentioned here permanently alter the disk and using them should be considered a last resort. Your results will definitely vary because every data recovery situation is unique. We're going to take a look at ScanDisk, Norton Disk Doctor, the uh, Norton Disk Tool Utility, and VGA Copy. I'll be using Norton Utilities 8 for DOS, but prior versions should be similar. Copies of Norton Utilities for DOS seem to be floating around on abandonware sites, and I'll put a download link for VGA Copy below in the description. So let's take a look at that first disk with the general reading failure and see what can be done to try and salvage it. This disk is probably heavily damaged, but let's see what we can do with the uh, Norton Disk Tools Revive command. At the command line, we'll enter disk tool slash revive and hit enter. Select a disk to revive, hit OK a couple times, and patiently wait while magic hopefully happens. Following the on-screen recommendations, let's use Norton Disk Doctor to see how well or not disk will work. Run Disk Doctor with NDD at the command line. If you have a mouse working under DOS, you can use it to navigate around here. We're going to select Diagnose Disk, the floppy drive A. The first thing we get are some file system errors, which I'm going to let Disk Doctor fix. Once the diagnostic scan is completed, we're going to perform a surface scan. Here, Disk Doctor is going to try to find bad sectors, copy the data to a good sector, and then mark the damaged sector as unusable. We want to test the entire disk area, so we're going to do a thorough test, and we're going to run it for 10 repetitions. Normally Disk Doctor will mark all the bad sectors on the first pass, but sometimes it takes a few more to reliably catch them all. When Disk Doctor finds a bad sector, it'll pause with the dialog box. Here you can see more information about which file specifically occupies that block. You can hit the button to automate the rest of the scan, and Disk Doctor will try to repair all the bad blocks it finds. So up top you can see that Disk Doctor gives you a visual representation of your disk, pretty similar to what ScanDisk shows you. And we can see that this disk is in pretty bad shape, with a lot of bad sectors that seem to be in places where there's data stored. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the scan because recovering all these files with 100% integrity is, is unlikely. Disk recovery is never guaranteed, but I think we did okay here. We managed to take this disk from completely unreadable to a state where we could at least recover some of our files. Let's see how we do with the next disk in the pile. Let's pop it in and try to get a directory listing with the dir command. Well, that's a good sign. We can get a directory listing, and we can see that there's some free space on this disk. If we need to recover any bad sectors, having free space is important. We can't move data to new areas on a disk that's completely full. Let's take a look at the disk using ScanDisk, since it's included with DOS. We'll run a surface scan similar to the one done with Disk Doctor earlier. Now I've sped the scan up a little, but you can see that it begins to slow the rate of the scan toward the end there. ScanDisk is read ahead and found a bad sector. Thankfully it looks like it's in an area where there's no data. You can use ScanDisk to attempt to repair the bad sectors, but Disk Doctor occasionally catches more. And you can do multiple passes. Let's set up our scan as we did earlier. Scan the whole disk, a thorough test, and 10 passes, although you can do fewer if you like. As bad sectors are found, we're going to mark them in attempt recovery. We're also going to speed this up by hitting the button to automate it. So we can see we have quite a few bad sectors here, but thankfully, looks like we have no data loss. The best thing we can do at this point is to copy all the files off this disk to a secure location, because the disk is really beyond the point of being usable. Thankfully, we didn't lose any files. Let's take a look at one last disk here. So we'll pop it in, we'll try to get a directory listing. Well, the good news is we can get a directory listing but it looks like there's a single file occupying every byte of free space in the disk. 
any bad sectors show up on the disk, we won't be able to repair them because there won't be any free space to copy the damaged data to. Let's run a surface scan on this disk by typing scan disk slash surface a colon at the command prompt. We'll let the scan run and I'll speed it up a little. And sure enough, we have a bad sector. And because we have no free space on the disk, it's unfixable. This is where we're going to try out VGA copy. The application is released in German, but if you run the English.exe file after unpacking your archive, the version will be patched to English. Run VGA copy at the uh, command prompt and you'll be met with a splash screen. We'll be using VGA copy to attempt to read the damaged disk, then create a disk image and compare the disk image to what was actually read from the floppy in the first place. One of the best features of VGA copy is the uh, adjustable number of read retries. VGA copy can be set to attempt to read the damaged area up to 99 times. It compares the data from each read to try to come up with the best approximation of the data actually stored in the bad sector. To keep the recording time down, I'm going to set it to 10 retries. We're going to pop in the floppy and just hit read. As you can see with the legend at the bottom of the screen there, quite a few errors were found. Several blocks couldn't even be read. Unfortunately, this means we won't be able to rescue our file. It might still be worthwhile to create a disk image though. A lot of early DOS games don't verify the file integrity when installing. You might be able to at least partially run your program until it crashes. So we're gonna hit save, and we'll be able to save the disk image. VGA Copy uses its own image format, the VCF, which makes things a little annoying, but I typically make a new disk right away anyway. We're going to run the compare operation. In VGA Copy will compare the data stored in the memory to the original disk. This is always a good idea to do, just to make sure the data is as close to accurate as possible. If you see any discrepancies, try reading the disk again. As you can see, recovering floppies can be a bit hit or miss. There are other floppy recovery tools out there like Spinrite that claim to be able to recover disks that are damaged beyond repair, but uh, I haven't had too much luck with uh, tools like that in the past. So I usually stick to the basics, Norton Disk Doctor, Disk Tool, Scan Disk, and VGA Copy. If you've had some spectacular results with another program in the past, let me know in the comments below. Still got quite a pile of discs to go through.